Hello and welcome to another Tallest Tower devlog. In this video, I set up this map as you can see here, and this little part spawning mechanism as well. I also fix a lot of game breaking bugs, which is always really good, and I generally just flesh out the game loop, so basically what this game is going to look like. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and without further ado, let's get in to the video. So I just created a little basic map for our game and I have all of the player locations plotted out right now and I have the center location where all of the parts will spawn. So none of this is final, I'm just kind of laying things out but now I need to actually program it. And by the way I'll make this look better, this is just testing to make sure that everything works out. So basically the way I want the game to play out is each player will get their own plot with these blue locations. That's where they'll go. It'll be in a more circular shape, obviously, as you just saw. And in the center part, we'll be throwing parts in every direction. So what I'm thinking, it'll, it'll like rotate periodically and I'll just spit parts by adding velocity in, in every direction. So every player should be able to get parts, they'll be able to fight over parts, and stuff like that. Okay, so I have a system implemented now that allows each player to join and get their own plot. There's this weird issue where their plot is like 15 studs tall, but that should be an easy fix. So now I need to start working on this middle bit where our parts will be yeeted for all to pick up and build with. So I've been working on the code for a little while and this is what I've got done. So you can see when we spawn in this little orb at the center is spawning parts and right now it has a set of three parts that it uses. Let me just show you real quick. It's in server storage, we have our parts, we have a plank, a sphere, and a wedge. I'll add more in the future and I could add some like complex shapes like models or whatever, but for right now this works. So basically the way the game work is all of these parts are spawning in the middle. You gotta chuck them over to your plot so you can start building with them. That's what I'm doing right now. Might actually be better in first person. So let me just get a few of these. There we go. So this should be enough to start out. So I'm just gonna put some parts start building up my plot. And the rotation's honestly kind of bad. I need to figure out a better way to do it. But it works for right now. Okay, that will work. I don't really care. Oh, what happened to that? Well, a part apparently just phased through me and went into oblivion, but that's okay. So now I can make a little stack. And by the way, these balls are to throw at other people so that it knocks their towers down. And right now, there is no limit to our spawner. It just keeps on spawning parts forever, which I might change that as well. But yeah. And the way I'm organizing my code for this is actually pretty smart. I might make a video on this. So what I'm using is a composition-based class system. So I have my game handler right here. And instead of using an is a mentality, which a game like a game handler is a game handler, I'm using a has a mentality. So a game handler has a plot manager and also has a part spawner so i use this index search function to basically search for when i whenever i call a method it looks to see which one of these has that method and it calls it so for example down here i'm calling start listening which is defined in this file but then 
I'm also calling start spawning, which is defined in this file. And I'm also doing this with our plot manager. So this allows me to get a like semi inheritance feel, but there is no inheritance. It's basically like multiple inheritance for the price of nothing. Like there's no added complexities. It's just really, really easy and allows me to set up my game handler module to handle everything. The only problem is, is it might get a little confusing since I'm using meta tables. This whole concept came from JavaScript and their tables are treated more concretely as instances, whereas meta tables are kind of just like ethereal. At least that's how I describe it. But yeah, this system works really well. If you want to see a video, make sure to comment. So I came across this really interesting bug. I think it's on my end, but honestly, I really don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I've tested this in a side project as well. If you have any suggestions, please comment them down below. But basically, I have my plot manager, right? And I, every time I create a new game handler, I create a new plot manager. In this plot manager, we have a plots table. And this holds all of our player plots, right? Wrong. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to set self.plots to user ID. And after that, I did, in our debug, I printed self.plots player user ID. And we never got anything. I checked new plot. That's not nil, so it should have, be a value. And I tried the same thing in the game handler. Didn't work. So my solution to this was adding was reinitializing the plots in the game handler, which is very, it's a terrible fix. But I mean, it works, and honestly, it really shouldn't change anything. It just makes my code that much more confusing. And honestly, I'm really enjoying composition-based programming here, but for some reason, this doesn't work. But now it works. It's a terrible solution. I don't know how I'm going to fix it, but yeah, I just wanted to show you. Okay, so I fixed one more major bug, and that was the bug where if I, like, clicked and then dragged down quickly, let me just bring this over here, if I clicked and dragged down quickly, the part would, like, yeet into space. And I was really confused by this, but it turns out, and I fixed it, obviously, and it turns out the problem I had was in here... And the on activate when you this it's called when you click with your mouse. I raycasted for the mouse and I checked to make sure the part that you're casting to actually works. And then I grabbed the part using another raycast for the mouse's position. So I did a raycast for the target and a raycast for the position. So basically what would happen is if you clicked on a part then you drag down really quickly, the position would be wrong. Like, the raycast would be wrong, so your position would get really offset, and some really weird stuff would happen. So, I fixed that. So just make sure to have one raycast if you're doing it in the same frame, because stuff, crazy stuff might happen. But, other than that, yeah, we're doing pretty well. So I think that's about it for this devlog. So that's about it for this video. I tried a different sort of style, only doing updates, not really any time lapses. So make sure to comment if you like this style better. It makes the videos more concise and a little quicker. It just depends. So if you like that, make sure to comment. If you don't, make sure to also comment. But other than that, I hope you guys like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And have a nice day and goodbye. Thank you.